Hey everybody, welcome back to Trek Yards. As always, I'm still Captain Foley. I'm still Commander Cuggins. And I'm still that weirdo from Scotland. That's right, it is Captain Daniel Hunter from Star Trek uh, Intrepid, a fan film series. Actually better known to most human beings on this planet, Nick Cook. Uh, so welcome, Nick. Hi there. I, I'm pretty sure there's most people that know me have got far more <laughs> fruity names for me than that. But yeah, Nick, <laughs> Nick's fine. Yeah. Whiskey. Today we are talking about something you're pretty excited about. Uh, that would be a crossover fan film uh, done by Samuel himself called uh, Star Trek Convergence. Is it Star Trek Convergence? Can't call it Star Trek Convergence, but it is in a sense. It's Convergence dash a Star Trek fan film. There you go. Perfect. And Nick's in it. I'm in it. I'm excited. We've already filmed, you know, a good chunk of the script. We were all together down in Northampton. It was, oh yeah, so uh, we had a great time. Uh, having seen some of the early footage, the camera work is amazing. Sam's done an amazing job directing this and framing it and shooting it. And his effects work is superlative. It, it looks amazing. Don't, don't stroke his ego too much. He's going to get too big for his britches. He tends to do that sometimes, but that's okay. He does do fantastic work. Well, you know, he's made us look good, and uh, I'm very proud to be a part of this. That that is my job. You know, take 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 an apple and shine even even more, so it gleams and glistens and and is amazing. It's a terrible That's analogy. Right. It tastes better when it's shiny. That's why you rub it on your. Shirt. It tastes better in a pie as well with custard, but you know. That's, That's what convergence is—a pie of talent. Ooh. Perfect. A pie of talent. <laughs> <laughs> How do you yeah, put a, definitely a talent because. This is my first fan film appearance, just so you guys get a little tease, and I'm excited for it. Not that it's a big role, but... Yeah. We're hey, all in you're it. you're in there. I'm, I'm a random it. lieutenant on the horizon, Stuart, as we won't tell you yet. And Nick has his own ship from Intrepid, the Intrepid itself. And what's what's great is, uh, as you guys might have known for our last interview and just the general fan film world, is that your Nick's been doing this for... He would not like me to say this, but a long time now. Yeah, 15 yeah. years. Yeah. And so... For me, as a person to to be able to do a crossover event and bring in these these legends in the fan film, we're all we're we're a niche within a niche, but within that niche, mm. as a legend of itself, and and do a crossover that incorporates, um, as Nick said, in another interview, you know, it is a five-ish film crossover. You know, it's Star Trek Intrepid, it's Star Trek Dark Armada, Robin Hood's film, it's Temporal Anomaly, my own film, which is awesome. It is Renegades and it is Republic as well. So it's a pretty cool multi mm. thing. And Stuart's seen the rough cut of the really early Skype rough cut. I have, yes. Um, and I am impressed as well. But I don't want to tell him that because, like I said, he gets a little bit too inflated. I think uh, one of the reasons most of us do fan films is because we enjoy doing it. We enjoy playing in that universe. But yeah. crossovers and having done crossovers before myself, one of the most fun things about crossover is working with people from other fan films that are friends that you get on with, that you have good chemistry with, and you just get together, you have fun, and you sh you make something fun, and we do this stuff for ourselves, and nobody's got any idea that we're these great filmmakers or great talents or that kind of thing, and we're not thinking that we're making the next great blockbuster. It's fun, and it's fun, f you know. As Sam said, fan films are kind of a niche within a niche, as our crossovers. But for the people that like these things, there's a lot of fun stuff in there, and it's going to look great, and it's going to be enjoyable for the people that like these kind of things. I think I think it's I think it's cool because Samuel's kind of creating like a cinematic uh, fan film universe, if you will, much like Marvel has done. So that's pretty fantastic. <laughs> and, and why does that make even more sense, Nick? Because you had the script and it said these little little cute words as a work title. What was the working title? Avengers. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, oh, it's man. a good sell. I mean, it, it is the sell. This is this is Star Trek Avengers, and then maybe some Star Trek Civil War too. That's that's enough. I think I did say it, say it to you originally as part of the pitch, Nick. So, Nick, what was the what started this whole long road for you? How did Samuel approach you? What was the first pitch? Um, what, what brought you on board? He bribed me with strippers and booze. <laughs> That'll always work. That's what he does for me too. Yeah. No. Uh, seriously. Uh, well, what happened was Samuel actually contacted me and asked if I was needing any effects work done, and I said, "Well, actually, there is a film we've got that." It's been languishing for ages. I could do with some effects work on it. Would you, if you'd like to take a look? And actually, it's a bigger job than I probably portrayed it to him. Um, but you know, he very kindly took a look at it and said, "Okay, well, let's do this." And he's done some amazing effects shot. He's still doing more stuff for me very kindly. 
Um, but, you know, we started kind of chatting more about that. And then he kind of pitched this idea to me. I thought, well, you know, I've done crossovers before with Hidden Frontier. Um, and I did a phase two, although that wasn't a crossover. Um, so I thought this could be fun. I've not done anything like this for a while. And I've had a lot less time to be working on films myself just because life's been busy. So mm -hmm. I thought, you know what, this could be ideal. I can go out, I can do one of these films, go down, shoot it and be done. Um, it sounds like a fun experience. I'm getting to work with Robin from Dark Armada, who Robin and I have spoken on and off for years about working together on something. So I thought this is a great opportunity to do something with Robin. Um, I love Samuel's work. He does great work. So I thought, you know what, this would be good. This would be a lot of fun. So I thought, yeah, he didn't really have to do much of a hard sell for me. I was pretty much, <laughs> you know, on board for that from the moment he mentioned it. Um, Don't ask me about the hotel. <laughs> we'll do. We'll do some behind the scenes about that. Um... Hooker Hotel. <laughs> Imagine if Gordon Rams went to the hotel. What would he say in his show? What would he do for that? This was a bad running joke I had going the entire shoot, okay? This was a um, very long, very bad joke, <laughs> up until the very last second of the very last day. <laughs> it was really bad. But so was the hotel. <laughs> okay, anyway, I'm amusing myself, so I'm going to move on from that. But uh, It yeah. is worth noting that, that, you know, some people might say, why are you doing Indiegogo to raise money for hotels and things? Are you putting extra money to, to go into good hotels? No, <laughs> no, we pointedly kept, we kept, we went as budget as we could and boy, was it budget, boy, but, but it was it... really convenient. It was, it was literally less, it was about a 10 minute walk from the yeah. shoot. So it was pretty convenient. And the breakfast were good. The breakfast were good Didn't when they got the orders there. right on about day three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, there were tomatoes. There were never tomatoes. They promised tomatoes <laughs> every day. <laughs> Well, maybe you told one twin and the other twin. <laughs> twins. There were twins. Twin guys running this place. Twin Norman Bateses. Twin Norman Bates. <laughs> it, was, it was a good shoot. It was, I it was have photos. Good. I'm <laughs> glad I did mine over Skype, I guess. I, I don't know. It was good fun. Okay, so we, we had a lot of laughs. We had good fun. It, don't get me wrong. It was hard work as yeah. well. I mean, we worked our, our tails off. It was... You know, we were up relatively early. Mm -hmm. we, were at, we were at the studio all day filming. Um, Nine was... to seven with about an hour of lunch. Yeah. And that includes like all the food and all the drink throughout the entire day, one hour. Literally. It was it was pretty intense. And we even got, some of us even got put to work stitching costumes by hand. Thanks, Nick. <laughs> Samuel says to me and Robin on the first day, it's like, oh, can you stitch the cuff bands on this? The, the, the department color bands and, on and the uh, 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 oh yeah, yeah and the velcro for copper yeah. oh yeah, yeah where's your sewing machine no by hand i was like what i don't sew things by hand oh, apparently i do now but, but you, you know, did you have that I skill did. you just forgot it slightly it's fine yeah i don't like to sew by hand that's why i have a sewing machine but yeah it was good it was it, it was good we had a good laugh we had well, a good time well, that, that was out of necessity though because literally we mm -hmm. I, I i gave the costume to chris Bedet, who's a temporal anomaly Chap. Yeah. He's a captain on Temple Anomaly, the only captain he's been brought back, which was absolutely amazing. After five years to bring a guy back who I haven't talked to in like three, that's pretty rare, actually. I think he is very good. I mean, he turns in a pretty, you know, amazing performance from life. Head of the acting department of the university and been there for like seven years. So I mean, it's, it's pretty he good. Is. Yeah. Um, and I, and I, I, you know, brought him the costume and he couldn't try on because of work for about two weeks. And this was about a month before the shoot. So we had time. And then he tells me about seven days before he doesn't, he doesn't fit. I remember that, yeah. And it's like, oh, ah, <laughs> uh, I've got to find a new post TNG fitting uniform with money that we haven't raised yet. Um, and I emailed, and as you might know, Nick, all the like, you know, third party Chinese sweatshops mm. all sort of closed down, so you can't order yeah. one from them. I, I tried desperately, um, ones that I knew sort of did in the past, and I said, can mm. I'll pay whatever shipping you need? Cause we mm. have, we have to get it here in the next six days because literally if Chris can't act that's a huge chunk of film we can't shoot and then that means the second yeah. shoot is huge and so I luckily found uh, a German chap that had one in the right-ish size and I was like I, I need it here in a day and a half can you send it tomorrow mm -hmm. and I paid the price I won't say how much 
because it's cost stupidly much, but it's yeah. like, had to, and it, and boy, did that suit him, that uniform looked really good and it on him. Fitted, it fitted perfectly, so that was good. <clears throat> Worth it, and obviously more professional uniform, it fit in with you guys, using a cheap sweatshirt would have looked a lot worse. Um, yeah. No, I think it was the right, it was the right call for sure. That's why we're doing Indiegogo to raise money because you know we have a we had a budget for travel, um, and then obviously things that have gone wrong that need to be funded because the project needs a budget. Um, budget would be good. Yeah. <laughs> so what did you think then when um, when you first read the script? Um, you knew obviously at that point you knew who was in it, you knew the Renegades I, was in it, you knew mm-hmm. all things and, and all the players. Name Stuart, I believe, or at least you read his name. What do you mm-hmm. think when you first read the script? I I thought it was very ambitious, um, and I have to admit to being somewhat skeptical as the practicality of us shooting all that in the time we would have, because mm. I think originally we were talking about shooting over one weekend, not two. It was originally a slightly shorter film, which is it I think... was a shorter film, and then yeah. you expanded it. So uh, slightly skeptical that we could actually do it in the time we had, but you know, pleasantly surprised that we managed to get through as much material as we did. And actually, I think we got through everything we planned to do on that first shoot, if I remember rightly. Yeah. So we did a pretty good job of getting through it. So yeah, my 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 certainly my first impressions were that it was ambitious, and there's a lot of. Th- yeah, it's a pretty ballsy story to tell. It's good. Okay. A big view of, uh, yeah, and there was some interesting stuff for all the characters to do in it. In that we all get a little bit of a dilemma to deal with, and to wrestle with our own kind of moral questions about what we should be, what should be done in this situation. And I don't think I think the thing I like is we don't really make a judgment on what the right decision was. So we kind of leave it up to the audience to decide, well, did they do the right thing? Did they do the wrong thing? Should they have handled that differently? Um, and I think our characters pretty much come to that decision. It's like, actually, you know, we did what we thought was right at the time. But, yeah, so I, I, I like that aspect of it. And I like that there's no clear-cut answers. And there's some pretty awesome kick-ass visual effects in there. Yeah, But it's not like just a battle for battle's sake. It's no, actually quite no. an intelligent no. battle. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Absolutely. I don't want to toot my own horn um, because I'm more just trying to make a parallel here. But you know, Stuart, you, your favorite episode of DS9 is um, I, what's the long name? I can't remember the name off the top of my head. I've, In the Pale Moonlight. That is not a long title at all. And that's biggest thing is that Cisco's doing is he doing the right or wrong thing? That's all a moral mm-hmm. question. So do you think my film kind of I didn't mean for it to? But is that a, kind of a parallel to the audience to explain like the the grey areas of federationiness and uh, mm-hmm. would that be a good parallel of an episode do you think i would say absolutely i was really i was really blown away with the the script writing to be honest um the visuals are fantastic of course they always are um but just the the detail and the thought that went into the script i think was really well done and multi-layered it was very mm-hmm. very yeah it's it's top notch guys trust me one of, one of the things i really like about it um because i mean i i'm very much into small character moments and mm. there's there's yeah. there's a couple of scenes i have with robin that i really like and it, i like stuff like that and i think they're small intimate moments um you get to see a the character of both these people but also the friendship that they have with them and it's it's portrayed very simply but it works uh, and these were lovely moments to play with Robin. I enjoyed them, and I'm looking forward to you know finishing that up. And it's funny because obviously I, I pitch it, and you're thinking, "Well, I'll believe it when I see a script, mm-hmm. a done mm-hmm. script, rated." You know. And then what did you think? Because I didn't quite go into the background or everything beyond mm-hmm. trying to work out how old you were and where you might be mm-hmm. in academy. But I kind of retconned you at a backstory with this with this guy that you've been friends with in reality for years. <laughs> And I basically set what that is in in the the, the, the canon of Intrepid. So what did, what was that like? No, and, I mean that's good because that? you know one of the things I like as a writer and as an actor, and I'm maybe being a bit grandiose calling myself <laughs> either of those things. But I one was of impressed things I by like, your acting, Nick. I oh, will give you absolute credit for that. But one of the things I really like from that creative point of view is if I if I create something and someone else adds to that in an organic way. Because as a writer, one of the things I really enjoy is creating dialogue, giving it to an actor, and seeing the actor take that and run with it and find things in it that I didn't see. But also, but in the same process, seeing you take things I've created and add more layers to that, that and that's a very enjoyable thing to watch. And it's a very satisfying thing to see. So, no, I really, I absolutely enjoyed that. 
So I remember when we talked about this after the fact, you said mm. you might, if you were doing crossover with Nick, mm -hmm. it would have been meeting for the first time. But mm -hmm. I, I skipped all that and I made you long mm -hmm. friends. So, mm -hmm. I mean, how do you feel now, having filmed that scene, sort of able to I, jump I, right into the bed of friendship, I, as it were? <laughs> I think that was a very good call, actually, because obviously Robin and I hadn't met face to face, but we've known each other and talked on and off for years. So, I mean, there was a relationship there. Yeah. Um, and we were able to bring that to that scene. And I think it just worked. It just worked. And I think it was the right decision, the right call. I think it was a good call to make. And what did you think, Stuart, when you, when you watched the, the rough cut and then see all these scenes come together and, and sort of character moments and stuff? Because you've seen a few fan films as well. I'm not, again, I'm not trying to build yeah. it up, but like as an as a objective piece of fiction um, and how the characters play and stuff. Because you, now you know Nick Moore even from meeting him in several interviews mm -hmm. and, and seeing his film. So, yeah. Well, I, I got to say, I didn't know anything about it and I got thrown lines, first of all. So I had to do my lines over Skype. Didn't to just tell to what it was. This, to put in this rough cut. So I'm like, okay. Didn't tell what it was. <laughs> that's odd. And then I finally saw the rough cut. And yeah, the character, the character relationships, the uh, development that's there is, it's... I didn't believe you wrote it, to be honest. <laughs> just, yeah. just saying. I, I mean, yeah. I couldn't do that for sure. I mean, I can write technical scripts. I can research. Yep. I can do that. But you can write me. You can write me talking. <laughs> yes, you do often. <laughs> yeah, um, but the creativity that went into that, like, it was just, it was, it blew me away. I, it was, it, it felt it, legit. It feels professional. It's very professional. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I think professional. I mean. You know, I think that's a weird term. Like these are all fan films, and we should aim to them be as good as we can make them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But for, I mean, I'm a prof I've got a degree in filmmaking. Does that make me a professional? I've done hundred plus jobs in different forms of filmmaking. I've done visual effects professionally, so I'm professional in multiple things. But I would not call it a professional production, despite you know, Nick, you're an absolute veteran of acting in this respect. So I'd call you a professional fan film actor. But it's really, fair. I'm not. But I, you know, I think we all no. have these mm -hmm. these these things. So it's like. Mm -hmm. That's one of the great things about this film. I, when I originally had the idea, um, and it was about more, you know, the horizon. How do I make this this new ship design, which you've all seen on the Go Go? You know, I made a ship, guys. Finally did it. Yay! Episode coming soon. Um, <laughs> you know, but I want to have this great story, and you want you need to service characters. You need to service. It needs to make sense because why just waste that time? There's be a reason to watch it. So I thought, well, obviously. I've got to know Nick a bit, and I'd met you in um, Destination, but we mm -hmm. very briefly. It was briefly. Like, hey, mm -hmm. I know you. Hey, I know you. I have, Take that, a picture. I have that photograph. <laughs> so do I. It's good. Such a good photo. Um, do you remember I had half my uniform on because I was in between changing and yeah. Anyway, <laughs> uh, and I, I knew that I, if if I could get Nick on board, I've got all that backstory already in place. I don't need to explain who he yeah. is, and I can jump into real dialogue, real character motivation stuff. And then it's all snowballed into getting uh, Robin and getting Renegades as the villains. Because again, we could have used Klingons or anything. Mm -hmm. But as I've, as we've said, Stuart, often use the canon. Mm -hmm. It's there. I mean, is it a cop out to use a pre existing thing or is it trying to make something more um, fleshed out? I mean, you saw Renegades, Nick, and mm -hmm. you've seen how they are in, in this film. I mean, how do they compare? Because I think I've deepened the mythology quite a bit. Oh, definitely. I mean, they're quite thinly drawn in there, but I think in Renegades, and I think this does add to that backstory a little bit, and I think it helped. Certainly, if you go and watch Renegades after this, that adds another layer to that, and that's nice. It's nice to add that complexity. Um, mm -hmm. I was going to say something else. I can't remember what it was now. But, you know, yeah, I think that's that's cool. Smart retconning. Smart retconning, absolutely. Rather than holograms you can <coughs> sit on tables. That's one of the things I was going to say, because I think... You were talking about you don't need to worry about Hunter's background because, you know, we know who he is and that. But also, I think, you know, there'll be people out there that haven't watched Intrepid, clearly, because, you mm. know, some people have lives. And um, <laughs> we don't. <laughs> so, um, you could come to Convergence not knowing who these characters mm. are and you would still be able to follow the story. Yep. But you might want to go and look at some of these other adventures to find that yep. extra depth. So, yeah, so I think um, and it would be interesting going and watching things like you know robin's films and my films and then keeping in mind that actually there's a relationship between these characters that you don't see um so yeah i i, I like the extra depth and i like the extra 
the extra th threads you've added to the tapestry. Yeah. Well, that's what Stuart said earlier. You know, it, it is kind of... A, I didn't mean to do this, but it is now a joint universe. It has to be, because you're all... And you're the Renegades, it's an official crossover event. You mm -hmm. know, someone said to me, are you really working with the Trepid? It's like, yes, Nick is literally... Hey, Nick, we're filming right now. Obviously, it's official. You know, you can't get any more official than that. But now we are a, you know, Temporal Anomaly sequel, a Renegades prequel, a mid-Intrepid film... Mm -hmm. I think it's after episode two or three. It's very specific because you're <laughs> it's so close together, your episode. It's really difficult. Yeah. And then we're a super prequel for, for Dark Armada. His very, Robin Hood's very first time in canon uniform. And I was really happy to say, Robin, we need you a real uniform. And he was like, what? I need you to make a real I, uniform, I, please. What I, what I think is really funny is obviously Rob, Robin has some grey hair now. <laughs> <laughs> so future Robin obviously has been t using the Grecian 2000. Yeah. <laughs> well, he wanted, to, he wanted to age gracefully and then decided... No. Nah. Yeah. Nah. Nah. Yeah. Yeah. You say the same, man. What the hell? I have aged just not as much as yeah, maybe not that as much not as much as it might have. Yeah. You, you'll be the we'll Patrick see. Stewart fan films appearing in twenty thirty six, you'll still look the same as you did in two thousand and one. <laughs> somehow. Yeah, I guarantee you'll have less hair, but uh, even less hair, but yeah. It's that could going. Be your, your, I could be we could do a crossover with Picard again. That could be your I want to go bald now. I'm going to choose to go bald and yes. come out one day. It says like this is the new style because you choose bald in the future, don't you? Yeah, I'm not sure bald's going to suit me. <laughs> <laughs> so Nick, what was your favorite thing about filming, and what are you looking forward to the most from part two? Well, my favorite thing about filming was really the experience of doing it and working with really just a fun group of people mm. um, and bringing some of these really quite special moments from the script to life but the smaller moments the battle stuff is fun and it's so you know let's get in a battle let's shoot some torpedoes fire the phases that kind of this stuff's fun but the, the stuff i really enjoy is the smaller character moments so i had some lovely character moments with robin um there's some nice moments between like robin and myself and chris there's a scene from the end where we're all in um the ready room i think and we're having this discussion about thing and, that, and over a drink and that's just a lovely scene that was just so much fun to play so mm. for me it was the smaller stuff like that that i really enjoyed but generally just the whole experience of getting together with a like-minded group of people and filming something fun and having that you know a fun story for a fun film but having fun while doing it and we did and boy did we eat a lot of pizza i like pizza <laughs> it's good it was a good resource yeah, it was indeed. So yeah, really so um, I mean, and as you can tell from the Indiegogo video, we ate pizza. <laughs> <laughs> That's you can tell the vibe of on on set. And just yeah. tell back to what you said about the it battles are fun, but they're more fun after you see them finished because that's when the fun comes together. But I think the little bits are more rewarding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, I mentioned those scenes with Robin, and certainly there's a snippet of one of those in the Indiegogo mm -hmm. video. Um, and it's just it's just a nice moment between two friends, and you can tell that they're friends. Which is great because I sort of did. You know, the hardest and the most fun bit was I had to learn what your character voices were because mm. I had to write people that I've never written before that have to be consistent, and also write a compelling relationship. Mm -hmm. That's a multiple yeah. level thing. I was really proud. Um, you got our characters' voices pretty well, I think. I'll, I'll be honest. Yeah. I actually ended up saying when I read out the lines, I had to do Robin's accent. To be able to say the lines properly. Yeah. A, ha, it's going to be acted that way, so you have yeah. to have that little yeah. bit on it. Um, whereas you're, you were instantly in my brain. Because you said, you said to me, I'm Colonel Shepard, just younger. Jack O'Neill. No, Jack 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 sorry, Jack O'Neill, but younger. And that, that younger helped, and dumber. <laughs> that helps so much, because he has such a distinct voice, and you can see it instantly. So, guys, we're at the end of this interview, but, Nick, why should people donate to the Convergence Indiegogo? Because it's a fun project. It's going to be a fun film with some of your, f I hesitate to say favourite fan film actors, but certainly one of the, <laughs> some of the more prolific fan film actors. Or certainly favourite post-TNG. There you go. Yeah, OK, we'll go with that. But, you know, it's going to be a fun project. If you like fan films, if you've liked our fan films over the years, mm -hmm. this is a fun experience. You will enjoy this film. You will get to see some You'll get to see people working together who have not worked together before. And I'll tell you, Robin and I got on like a house on fire. Chris was great. Nim was great. You've got a great cast there watching us work. If you like our work, you will enjoy this film. And it's just fun and exciting. And the effects are going to blow you away. 
Stuart, why do you think people should support the Indiegogo? Because you're in it too, Stuart. <laughs> Rule in it. <laughs> because it's Captain Foley's first appearance in a fan film. That's why. And because, like you guys have said, I can't say it as good as Nick did, but it's a fantastic... It, it, the way it came together, it's beautiful. It's really well done, and I really enjoyed it personally. So I think you guys are going to absolutely love it. Plus, it'll get your feet wet into these other fan films that you might mm. not have known about, but mm. you can definitely branch out and check those out as a result of this and then get you know a feel for the universe as uh, as it, Samuel has presented it. So the, I guess Samuel... Fan film why, multiverse, yeah. Yes. Samuel, why why do you say that people should donate? And, well, i, I got to throw something in there. Another reason you should donate is so that he'll shut up. I talk to him on almost a daily basis, and he keeps talking about the fan film. I want to see it finished. Samuel, why do you think they should donate to the Indiegogo? Because I want to see it finished. <laughs> I'll steal your line there. We, you know, we, the first part, with so much chemistry. I know we're going to have that again for a second part of filming. But we literally can't film a second part without funds because this is a fun Indiegogo to fund the travel. We're all international to each other, but I mean, we're all, you guys are all flying in. Okay, not to use Stuart, but you know what I mean? Everyone else is flying in internationally. That's a cost because we, I want it to be a certain quality, a certain high standard. You guys have seen track cars and how it developed. You've seen Temporal Anomaly, your least bit is Temporal Anomaly, hopefully. The bar I want to be, we're no, you know, highest end fan film, but we're a strong middle in every regard, I think. And I wanted to make sure everyone could be together to ensure we've got that strong middle quality um, but in comparing to the Giants. Um, but it's just an unusually um, cool fan film for right now, I think. Um, and, and given the other projects I'm involved in and hopefully talk to Nick about other projects he wants to work on, hopefully this would be a great um, bringing back an, a new era of fan films, honestly. Because I think mm -hmm. there's a lot of great stuff coming in 2019 and mm -hmm. 2020. I think it's be a really nice one to have if you guys support, you'll get some great perks that we all can sign and such, and support the, the biggest crossover event in Star Trek fan film history, because you're all together in the same room looking damn sexy. Yeah. And on that note, guys... I ended with sexy. Please, I don't know what came over me. <laughs> please donate to the Indiegogo. <laughs> anyway, please donate to the Indiegogo. Support please. this awesome fan film, and... Uh, Hopefully we'll see more cool stuff from these guys because it's fantastic, I gotta say. So And see more Nick again to about Intrepid and other cool things because you've got a long legacy to talk about. That's right. So So until next time, I'm Captain Foley. I'm Connor Kongs. And I'm some weirdo from Scotland. Name Still a damn Nick. captain over me. It's terrible. <laughs> Go, captain. See you later, guys. Bye. All the best. Take care. Bye. -bye.